Longtime followers of the JAIK channel know that I'm quite a fan of competitive games. I've played years of League of Legends, hitting the peak of mediocrity every time, played a ton of different card games, being able to hit very high ranks due to the copious amounts of sweat that I put into learning the metagame, and it also means that I really like playing fighting games. Now, if I was to consider myself mediocre in League of Legends, when it comes to fighting games, it honestly feels like I'm just scratching the surface for what this genre has to offer. Every time I play, I always feel like I'm learning new things, new interactions, and with so many games out there, it feels like I'm always able to get new experiences out of this genre all the time. But even within fighting games, I've always kind of just stuck to my own lane of either just a ton of Street Fighter or anime fighters. And I've been meaning to change that, so when Choops recommended that I try out The Last Blade, an SNK game, I thought, why not? How bad can this be? And so welcome to JAIK Plays The Last Blade. My first day was interesting. Or rather, I should say my first session was interesting because, well, the goal of this day was just to feel out the game. And oh boy, feel out I did. No way. I think my issues right now are 1. I don't really know what the system mechanics are, and the game doesn't teach me anything about the system mechanics, and 2. I'm treating this game like I'm playing Blaze Blue. I just want to go in and press buttons, do some cool combos, but maybe that just isn't the way to go. Maybe I just need to be on power mode and just one button at a time, play a strong neutral game and hope that's enough damage. But after flopping through my first day, I was thrown a game facts guide. And yes, it was written on the same stone tablets Moses wrote the Ten Commandments on, and it was written by a guy named Moria Mug. I've read through this guide multiple times, didn't absorb any of it because my reading comprehension is abysmal, but I did learn some things. And I think it's about time I figure out who my main will be in this game. It's actually been about a few days after the initial first day, but I'm coming into this with a renewed mindset. And this time, I'm a little bit more determined to find out who I would like to play. I started off today's session by playing some Zantetsu, and right off the bat, I think I really like playing it. But after winning a match against an AI, I started to see the dark side of this character. I like edgy characters, I think that's evident by my love for Undernight, but this was so edgy that I got cuts on my fingers after this win. Did he just die? Losers must die. Did he just kill him? And even by level 4 CPU standards, I just keep losing the goddamn old man Wash the Coochie. I just feel like I can't get a grasp against this character even when I'm playing against the CPU, that I'm waiting for him to just use his big charge attack and then I punish him for it. But then that leaves me open for a grab. So it's been a little tricky fighting this guy, and even against the lower level CPU, I'm getting my shit kicked in. Maybe I'll just give Washizuka a shot. At least it'll give me some insight on how I can maybe beat this guy. Washizuka is a charge motion character, and I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of charge motions. I personally am more used to playing on pad, and I think by the end of my fighting game career of mediocrity, I'll always end up being a pad player. But when it comes to charge motion characters, I'm just not a fan of doing it on pad. I lack an analog stick, so I can't do the perfect charge motion inputs, so I usually bust out the hitbox style controller for these types of things. The hitbox style controller just 
feels better to do charge motions on since I'm able to tactically feel both buttons. So for Washizuka, I busted out the good old hitbox style controller for this. Despite losing to Lee, Washizuka feels great. I think he does a lot of things that I like in a character. If I was to pour my time into this character, I don't think I'll be losing against a CPU is the kind of feeling that I got. And if I were to beat the hardest difficulty on story mode, this might be the character that I spend my time with. Fighting against Lee, however, did expose some things about Washizuka. He absolutely struggles against characters that have really fast buttons, and once I get pushed into a corner, I'm going to struggle. But a character needs to have weaknesses, and this is something that I can definitely work around. But there is still one more character that I do want to try out because, well, I have to keep the tradition alive and play ice characters. Therefore, Yuki is the last character that I'll be trying out before deciding on which character I'm going to be spending the most amount of time with. Yuki has a lot of great things that I like in a character. Great fireball, great buttons, and a good kind of mid-range control -y type buttons and moves. Her DP kind of sucks, but look, she can't be everyone's winner, and it is what it is. But really, her power version of the character is really where I think she shines the most as a character. I can press like three buttons, and a quarter of their health bar is just gone. I like that. Out of all three characters that I've played so far, Santetsu, Washizuka, and Yuki, I think I'll be learning Yuki, so I guess my hitbox style controller is going to go in the drawer for now since I'm not playing a charge motion character. But out of everything that happened in day two, there are still some things that I'm struggling to wrap my head around with, and that's when it's my turn and their turn. I'm also struggling to keep up with the pressure after a hard knockdown since characters can roll on wake up. So it feels like my Oki is weaker, but if I can somehow manage to figure out rolling frame traps, or at least have some resemblance of a theory of a frame trap, then I think I'm going into day three, hopefully my last day, a little bit easier. I'm coming into this day like one of those stereotypical dude bros at a bar trying to pick up girls. What I mean by this is that my confidence is at an all time high, but my skill level all time low, which means I should mentally prepare myself to lose a lot. After all, SNK has notoriously been known to have the most atrocious input reading AI in existence. This is going to be exciting. My first attempt went by alright. I think I'm getting the hang of this game, and I even got my super off a few times. There are a few things that I think I need to fix in my gameplay, but overall through the three days, I think I got a good hang of the gameplay. I also ended up running into Shigen again, who for the life of me is the bane of my existence. No matter what game I play, I always seem to struggle with a grappler matchup. I've noticed within my style of game plan, I want to go in and set the pace. I've never been a defensive player, and I feel more comfortable being the one to always open up the player instead of being the player looking for openings. It's probably why I don't enjoy the zone or play style, and it's also a weakness in my style of play. And grapplers are probably best at exposing me for this. So I figured I just need to sit back and play it a little bit slower. Jump A for pokes, fireballs, and catch them on landing seems to be the way to go against Sheikin specifically, but this might be something that I need to work on throughout all the titles of games that I play. Besides Shigen though, which is just a stylistically difficult matchup for me, there was one other character that seemed to be a thorn on my sides, Moria. This dude was my hard counter. With Yuki, I developed this weird Smash Bros like style of gameplay where I would just keep jumping and spacing my light and heavy slashes, but the moon slash this dude did was my roadblock. It was my hard counter to the playstyle that I had meticulously developed through my 5 hours of playtime and it was downright frustrating not to be able to figure out how to beat this move. And so my next few runs just ended here, at Moria. I was just unable to continue. But then, I had the god run. My last couple runs had helped me figure out the spacing to Yuki and her jump slashes. It was a downright annoying playstyle that I would hate to play against, but it was my best shot against fighting these input reading CPUs. I ran through a mono with ease thanks to this playstyle. Akari, as annoying as she is to fight, also just got demolished by this playstyle. Juzo, more like Huzo, because he also got red. It was great. 
Lee, however, was a bit of a challenge for this playstyle, since if I misposition my jump attack, he would punish me for a lot of damage. And he was a combination of not really knowing what he's capable of and being a rush down to my poking playstyle that ended up being a little bit difficult for me. And so I did lose to Lee, but I was able to recollect myself and finish him off without losing any more credits. Even Cade was relatively simple, and this dude has a Guilty Gear Dragon install move that turns him into Rock Howard from Mark of Gara. Ran through Cade like it was no issue, but then it was time to fight Moria again. This dude has been the bane of my existence, and once again, he proved to be really difficult. The moon slashes that he does is really hard to deal with, and I had to space my moves perfectly if I was to take him down, but even that proved to be difficult since he was able to cancel his run into the moon attack. But this was the god run. I can afford to make mistakes, and mistakes I did make. But again, this was the god run. I can afford to make mistakes, and I did it. Moria was the bane of my existence. I can't stress this enough. My blockade throughout all these runs and I had finally done it. But it wasn't over. Out of the ashes rises... Haomaru from Samurai Showdown? Not really, he's not actually Haomaru, but he sure does look like it. While Haomaru is probably a nice dude, I've never played a Sam Show game, Musashi Akatsuki is an absolute menace. I had a difficult time fighting this dude until I realized he had some laggy, punishable moves and as long as I'm able to jump over some of these moves, then theoretically, I should win. Admittedly, it took a little bit to get used to. The cross slashes that he did is probably his fastest move, and I definitely got punished for rushing in thinking I can get in some damage after he threw out that move. So my main reliance of damage was whether he did Power Geyser, I would hopefully jump over it, and then get some real big damage in, and that seemed to work. And I thought Akatsuki was the final boss, but... Turns out I had one more dude left, the final boss, Shinosuke Kagami. I was not ready for this guy, but turns out he was a total pushover, and then, what the fuck? He has a phase 2? Phase 2 I was not expecting at all, he was a Street Fighter V shifting all over the place ass character, and his damage caught me by surprise. But after losing round 2, I just kinda played my game and it worked. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about just absolutely decimating Kagami, the final boss, even in his awakened form, but managing to struggle against Mori and Akatsuki of all people, I don't know. I still managed to do it, and I'll take it. After the defeat of Kagami, there is a bit of a story going on with Yuki and Moria, which I have no clue what it's actually about, but I did it. I had beaten the last blade on the hardest difficulty. The Last Blade was an absolute pleasure to play. When I was first recommended this game, it started off as, why not, I got nothing better to do. I like playing fighting games, and I feel like I don't play enough fighting games. And for the 5.5 hours that I played, I really did physically feel like I was improving every time I did play the game, and that's a joy only fighting games can really bring out. Admittedly, day one, I had no fun playing this game. There were some wacky moments that had me questioning what is going on, but it's definitely because I was stubbornly trying to make it a game that it wasn't. I was trying to play this game like it was Melty Blood, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, but really, it's an SNK game, not any of the other games that I listed up above. And once I adjusted my attitude towards the game, the game became infinitely more enjoyable, and I think it's fair to say that I had a good time. Another thing that was phenomenal about this game was for sure the sprite work. I've always respected SNK for their sprite work, with their magnum opus being King of Fighters 13, but there were a lot of subtle details that made the sprite work here so cool. Like in Yuki's stage, there was a bunch of snow, I could hit someone with a heavy attack, and snow would then fall off the trees and land on the ground. Or in the background of certain stages, you can see other characters present, like Akari and Juzo cheering each other on. Genbu stage is a serene water place while the subtle nighttime stage of Washizuka set in ambiance and mood. And while Moria was absolutely just kicking my ass time and time again, at least the stage was really pretty to look at. As for the gameplay, I didn't really fully utilize the game's mechanics. I was told time and time again by other people online that I could somehow do a super cancel, but hell if I know. 
Raw Supers, Book of Speedy, all day, baby. But at least if I was to go back, there is something for me to still explore game mechanic-wise, and that's just as exciting. But for now, I can put this last Blade chapter to rest. Yo, I finished the last Blade. So what do you think about the game? Yeah, I had a really good time. It was uh, surprisingly really good. So you're going to be playing Last Blade 2 now, right? There's a Last Blade 2? Oh shit, that's so gangster. So what do you think about the game? <laughs> so good. <laughs> I'm fucking using that. <laughs> <laughs>